it was. Back when? I have the funniest story. Okay, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, Georgia. Okay, well, we're here with Brian, the viticulturist Hello. over here at nice Vineland Estates. And we were talking, he was going to, he was, there's this very interesting uh, rootstock that is here. That There's a story, apparently. And I was just saying, I remember the recent Vice Clone 21 going back how many years, Brian? 1979 it was planted. Wow, 1979. Yeah. So that's kind of my memory of Vineland when I was just a babe. I don't even know if I was drinking. Yeah, I was drinking. <laughs> oh, please, Georgia. <laughs> All right, never mind. But anyway, fast forward, how many years later, there's another very interesting so, story. So there's a really interesting oh. story about this, and that uh, my father has been growing grapes for uh, 60 odd years or so, and he's responsible for bringing in the vast majority of the grapes from Europe into Canada. In fact, there's probably not a vineyard in Canada that my father hasn't set his footprints into. And so my father's now 77 years old and he drives around the vineyard and he yells at me telling me what I should and shouldn't do. <laughs> and, um, and so he came to me about uh, two days ago and he said, I want you to know how your vines are doing. And so he, he pulled this out of his car. My mom carries it in and uh, said, where'd you get this? He says, I took cuttings in December. I wanted to make sure your vineyard is healthy. I didn't even know he did this. So this has been growing in his house for the last month and a half or so where he took cuttings from the vineyard and you can see that this is actually uh, a Weiss 21 grape, the same vines that we have growing in the vineyard, and it'll actually sprout its own roots. And so if you're to plant an, a grape, um, typically we would cut it off at a, at a certain point, we would attach a rootstock to it, and the rootstock would be responsible for growing. But what he's done is he's taken that little bud, he's severed it in the bottom, and it's actually growing its own, its own cool. root system now. And so this was something that he had in his house for the last little while. So my point in telling you this is that my father... And what's the point? My, my, my father still, to this day, after however many decades of... Six or seven decades of growing grapes and making wine in Canada, still has a childlike enthusiasm that's for wonderful. things like this. Wow, isn't that and exciting? That's what, that's what keeps him young and that's what keeps our family motivated. That's why we've been doing this for three generations now. And, and so my father's a fantastic example of somebody who just has embraced this industry from the moment he said to put in, uh, in his very first vineyard until until the day he dies one day, hopefully a long time in the future. He'll yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. That's a great story. And his, wow. his, his favorite time, he's told me, his favorite time to walk in the vineyard is just at yeah. butt break. Yeah. He, he, says the, he, he says he receives energy that gets him through the year. Wow. And, um, wow. Yeah, he really does. That's yeah, so yeah. Cool. He's, your dad's got a spiritual link with with lines, and so this when I saw this didn't surprise me at all, because <laughs> he, he he wants a little zip, right? So yeah, he made it himself. Yeah. I want to tell you guys a really funny story um, <laughs> about uh, George's husband Ken. Ken has been a fixture in the Canadian wine industry for decades. Yes. He's much younger, I mean <laughs> older than Georgia. <laughs> and so, so Ken actually at a time used to represent Vineland Estates wines in uh, in the Toronto area. And when I first moved to Ontario in 1991, I was, I was driving around kind of learning the ropes and, and figuring out uh, where the hot spots were and where we needed to go for dinner, et cetera. And so my brother at the time says, we've got to go to Toronto. We've got to do a delivery of wine to our agent in Toronto. And he says, afterwards, we'll go for dinner. I thought, this is great, fantastic. So here's a little kid from British Columbia who's, who's just kind of figuring out Toronto. And, and since then, I've learned to... Um, very wary and nervous and scared of it, but that's when I was young and, young and naive. And so off to Toronto we go, and we're in a, in a Dodge panel van. We're driving and chugging through. We've got it completely filled up with, with wine, 30 or 40 cases of wine. And he says, we've got to go to Ken Chase's uh, condominium. It's right in the center of Toronto. So, so weaving through the streets with this Dodge panel van, we get into his underground parking lot, and the van is too high. We can't get into the parking right. lot. And so my brother, being the Newtonian genius that he is, decides <laughs> to let the air out of the tires. Oh my goodness. Oh my so the, the so car funny. settles down and we've got like just millimeters to get through. So sure enough. Uh, I never heard uh, this story. Let's see, <laughs> we, we drive into your, into your condominium. Oh my God. Unload the truck. Well, of course, you unload the truck while the weight comes out of it. Oh no. That's oh, that no. And so all the air that we've let out of the tires, we now have flat tires, and we still can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to unload all oh the wine back God. in, oh, oh, no. drive the van out, park it outside, and carry every single piece of it. <laughs> it was the worst wine delivery. <laughs> That's a pretty life. funny yeah, story. Yeah, it's it's oh my God. funny. <laughs> <laughs> That story. Yeah, that's great. That's a great story. Oh,
So I don't know if Ben ever told you that. He never did. How long did it take him? Oh, hours. Hours and hours. Way longer than this. Funny.